One of the most powerful elements of Solid Edge is synchronous technology. The synchronous workflows are very different to the traditional ordered or feature-based modeling techniques many users are familiar with, both in Solid Edge and other 3D CAD software. We've put together this Solid Edge tutorial to give you some introductory training in synchronous technology. This tutorial will be particularly useful for Solid Edge users who are currently working with only traditional modeling techniques, but are considering migrating to synchronous technology. Firstly, let's look at a brief introduction to the steering wheel and live rules, which are key to working with synchronous technology. Then if we select a face on the part, the command ribbon will reappear and provide us with a different set of options based on what we have selected. Since we selected a face, the default action is to move the face. However, the action icon at the left hand end of the ribbon allows us to change this to something different as we can see. These options and how they work will be covered in detail in the part modeling training material. If we leave the command ribbon action set to move, notice that there is an on-screen object that has appeared right at the point where we selected the face. This object is called the steering wheel. Currently it's shown in a compressed state since it has a progressive display behavior. If we manipulate the steering wheel in some way, it will display fully. We use the steering wheel in order to perform synchronous moves on geometry within the model. Understanding its function is vital to understanding the synchronous modeling process correctly. The steering wheel will be covered in depth in the part modeling training sessions. For now watch as we simply select one of the direction axes in order to move the face. Another aspect of making synchronous modifications is the transparent Live Rules panel that has appeared at the bottom of the screen. Live Rules will automatically look for and maintain strong geometric conditions in our design as we adjust geometry. When we previously moved the face on the left of the model, Live Rules was switched off. If we now switch Live Rules on, notice how other faces in the model move too, even though they were not selected. Live Rules found some of the conditions that were set and maintained them. Again, Live Rules will be covered in detail in the part modeling sessions. This next example looks at some of the different ways we can lock to or create sketch planes. As you'll see, sketches are handled in a very different way within the synchronous mode. However, the way synchronous sketches are applied, manipulated and used is quite different to those within the ordered mode. This is one of the first hurdles to overcome when learning synchronous modeling for users that are very used to traditional ordered techniques. When starting a sketch, it's not necessary to activate or show any of the default reference planes. Instead, Solid Edge will seek out the base plane that is most parallel to the current view. We can see this here. Since the XZ plane is most parallel, our cursor crosshairs are aligned with the X and Z axes. Any geometry we construct will be projected onto this plane. Once the dynamics start for a specific command, the same sketch plane will stay active even if the view is rotated. If we then reset the command with the right mouse button or pick another command, it's then possible to start sketching on another plane. Now because the XY plane is most parallel to our view, the sketch geometry is projected onto the top reference plane. Let's open up example 1 and look at another scenario on a model already containing some solid geometry. Synchronous sketches, just like traditional sketches, can be created on planar faces that exist in the model. These can belong to the solid body, as in this example, or they could even be construction surfaces. Notice that if we select a sketching command, as we move over a planar face, it will highlight indicating that if we click the left mouse button to initiate the sketch command, a sketch will be created coincident with the highlighted face. We'll draw a rectangle on this face. Once again, if the command is reset with the right mouse button or a new command is selected, we can go ahead and choose another face to sketch on. This type of sketching workflow, like the one we looked at in the previous empty part, is called implied plane locking, in that we imply which plane or face we're going to sketch on simply by positioning the mouse appropriately. 
implied plane locking occurs in the following sketching scenarios. If the first click lands on a planar face of the model, it will lock to that face. If the first click lands on a reference plane or a plane of a coordinate system, it will lock to that plane. If the first click connects to an existing sketch element, it will lock to the same plane as the sketch. If the first click lands in free space, it will lock to the base reference plane that is most parallel to the current view orientation. We've seen some of these techniques in action already in this tutorial. Back in our example, remember that the implied plane is only locked for the current active command. Once the command is reset or you choose a different sketch tool, it's possible to sketch on a different plane. Another method available is explicit plane locking. This allows us to define a sketch plane which can then be used for multiple commands. Notice that as we drag our cursor onto a face, a small lock symbol appears. If we left click on this before starting our sketch, we will lock to that plane. Look out for the lock symbol that appears in the top right hand corner of the screen. This shows when we are explicitly locked onto a plane. We'll draw another rectangle on this top face. Then reset the command. Since we're still locked to the top face, no other faces can be selected and all sketch elements will be projected onto the top face, even if we reset or change commands. This method also helps when we need to start the sketch geometry away from the face we need to sketch on. We can see this as we start this line off the side of the face. Considering some part modelling, one area that is treated differently is the reordering of rounds. Let's take a look. In an ordered model, it's possible to adjust the order that rounds or blends were applied by adjusting their position within the history tree. This will change the blend patch where rounds meet each other or interact. Since we don't worry about order and history within a synchronous model, it is not possible to change the order of a round or feature in the Pathfinder to recompute the blend patch. However, we do have the ability to adjust the blend patch result using the context menu. Let's return to Solid Edge and take a look. We'll add another round to the outside edge of this top face so that it interacts with the previous round we placed. Since the round in the corner was placed first, we get a curved blend patch as shown. To change this, we just need to right click on it and choose Reorder Rounds from the context menu. Now the result is as if the corner round was done last. We'll repeat the same on the other blend patch. We can swap back and forth as many times as we like. Let's turn the model over and repeat the same process in a few other areas. We'll change the blend patch where the round on the circular boss interacts with the one on the straight edge. Now it's computed as if the straight edge was rounded first. We'll also modify the patches that go around the webs in the circular recess. These can be done individually for each side of the web. Or we can complete them both at once as shown. We can even multi-select a series of blend patches and complete them all at once. Another area of considerable difference is synchronous patterning. This particular example looks at some of the more advanced options which can be used in the fill pattern command. First we'll select the cutout in the center of the part. Then choose the fill pattern command. This time we'll choose the radial option from the command ribbon. This reveals another option to the right. Radial patterns fill a region with radial rings of occurrences. There are two different types, these are instance count or target spacing. We'll leave it set to instance count for now. Next we'll identify the region that the pattern needs to be created in by selecting this face. Then we can hit accept to preview the pattern. We now have two fields that will control the pattern. One is the distance between each radial ring, the other is the occurrence count around each ring. We'll modify the values here accordingly. At this time the primary bearing or torus can be selected in the simplified 2D steering wheel and used to rotate the occurrence's position around the origin of the pattern. 
all occurrences will remain equally spaced and maintain their orientation. The angle can be defined dynamically or a specific value can be entered. We'll leave this set to zero for now. Note that this function is also available in the other fill pattern options too. At the moment each instance is oriented relative to the parent geometry. However if we hit the center orient option from the command ribbon all the instances line up as shown. Each instance will match the parent feature orientation relative to the secondary axis that has now appeared on the steering wheel. The steering wheel will now allow further manipulation of the pattern. Selecting either the primary bearing or the torus will allow the instances to be rotated and moved relative to the parent feature. This can be done dynamically or by typing a value. Each instance matches the parent feature orientation relative to the secondary axis. We'll leave it set to zero for now. If the secondary bearing is selected, the secondary axis can be rotated. This will maintain the position of the pattern but will change the orientation of each instance. Again, each instance matches the parent feature orientation relative to the secondary axis. Once again, we'll leave it set to zero for this example. Looking at sheet metal, let's take a look at the differences with the contour flange command and look at what is known as a complex contour flange. Now we'll create a contour flange that runs along multiple edges. This is done in exactly the same way as before, but once the command has been started and the flange previews, we simply need to pick additional thickness faces that are connected to the one that the flange is on. The chained option in the command ribbon could help with this if necessary. Notice how the corners of the flange are mitered automatically. The corner conditions for these can be controlled by hitting the options button in the command ribbon then the Mitres and Corners tab, and choosing a corner condition as shown. We'll look at the circular cutout condition too. Finally, we'll hit the right mouse button to process the feature. This will generate a complex contour flange, and as such there will be one entry for it in the Pathfinder. Expanding it will reveal two closed corner features that apply to the two corners that the flange created. Selecting one of these will display an edit definition handle that will allow the parameters of the closed corner to be adjusted using the heads up field and the command ribbon. Finally, we'll take a look at some of the techniques that can be used to adjust parts directly within the assembly. Live rules are also honoured within the assembly environment. We can see this here as we adjust the width of this block. Live rules are maintaining its symmetry. Of course, if we wanted to maintain the thickness of the vertical wall, we could select its face to be included in the move, or, as we're doing in this case, simply lock the PMI dimension. We'll also add this hole to the select set so it moves too. We'll set the width of the block by choosing the end point of the front edge. Also, if we adjust one of the block's top faces, we can see that once again the live rule settings maintain the coincident face condition or symmetry on the opposite side. Of course, again, we could pick the radius in the slot so it moves too. Note that live rules are only honoured on the parts that are being adjusted. They will not work across multiple parts within the assembly. This Solid Edge tutorial was compiled from content delivered in the Solid Edge ST Migration Training Course available at Solid Mastermind. The ST Migration Course consists of 22 online video sessions. To find out more, visit www.solidmastermind.com forward slash go to forward slash st migration. Many thanks for watching.